Keeping up with today's fast-paced world can be difficult. Accelerate your life with iFiber Communications high-speed internet. Surf, stream, and game like never before. Give us a call at 509-754-2600 and find out more at iFiber.tv. Recently, a pilgrimage which had waited nearly three decades to take place finally occurred at the Wild Horses Monument near Vantage. Artist David Govadier designed the 15 life-size metallic stallions to commemorate the Washington State Centennial Celebration in 1989, but had not been back to check on his horses in over 20 years. I always imagined what it would be like if you were an old, old cowboy and you couldn't run like your horses do, so you, you come down to the corral and you lift up the rope and open the gate and let the ponies out. Then you can run with them wild. Govader's return to the stable of his creation on a rocky bluff overlooking the Columbia River at the southwest edge of Grant County coincides with the announcement of his desire to finally complete the project as it was originally intended. Although most people simply know these familiar steel-forged equines as the wild horses, the artistic installation's actual name is Grandfather Cuts Loose the Ponies, and the enormous basket which Govader envisioned these horses being released from is what he is now working to see physically realized at the site. And then there's the other meaning of the gift of creation, that this basket turned on its side pours out life. And it could be anything, all life. But horses represent so much to our human civilization that that uh, struck dear to my heart. The campaign to enhance and finish the monument is already receiving a great deal of support, including from the Kaufman engineering firm of Spokane, who joined Govader on his recent sojourn to volunteer their services by mapping the installation in preparation for the addition of the basket. The drone is taking aerial photographs of the whole site. And we also have a, a, a scanning device that we have that creates a, what we refer to as a point cloud. So we're making an exact three-dimensional model of all the ponies right now in the hillside. And then we can virtually insert the basket that we're designing into this three-dimensional scan model that we're doing today. So we'll be able to see exactly what this is going to look like when it's finished. The basket, which will also include two more ponies within its framework, will be no small undertaking to construct at approximately 36 feet in diameter and weighing roughly 24,000 pounds. CDA Metals of Spokane has accepted the challenge of constructing the giant addition, which only seems fitting since the company was also involved in fashioning the 15 horses which have now stood proudly at the monument for nearly 30 years. These horses, uh, we burned them out uh, 29 years ago on our burn tables and this, this steel is a A588 steel, some people call it Core 10, and uh, it's a rust steel, so once it rusts, it doesn't continue to rust. This, these will be here 30,000 years from now. Like Govader, Dave Colson had not returned to visit the horses he helped give rise to in over two decades and was thrilled with the opportunity to finally see them up close once again. The last time I saw these they were laying on a, on a burn table and we were cutting them out. I, of course I came up here 27 years ago and took pictures once they were up here and, and uh, they, they haven't changed. A little, little bit of graffiti. Graffiti is a constant issue at the monument, which is regularly eliminated by volunteers who are armed with their own cans of tonal rust-inhibiting spray paint. Along with the basket and new pair of foals, there are also plans to add an interpretive station at the site and rehabilitate the monument's trail system, the latter of which is being looked at already as a potential project for a troop of Boy Scouts out of the Tri-Cities area. Govader says he needs to raise approximately $1 million to accomplish all of his desired improvements to the monument and has started a fundraising effort at fundthebasket.com for those who would like to donate to the cause. Reporting for iFiber One News, I'm Chris Hansen. Thank you.